This is your teacher, Cherika, welcoming you to another English 5 virtual class. Today, you will learn how to distinguish text types according to purpose and features. Are you ready? Awesome! Let's start then. Do you have a pen and paper with you? I have here four sets of jumbled letters that you need to unscramble to come up with words related to our lesson. I will give you two minutes to answer all four items. Unscramble the letters to form words connected to texts. Time is up. Let's find out what these words are. Are you ready? Great. What do you think is the correct answer for the first set of jumbled letters? You're right. The answer is classification. Now let's find out the answer for the second jumbled letters. You guessed it right. The answer is explanation. Let's move on to our third jumbled letters. Can you tell me the correct answer? Great job! It's enumeration. Finally, let's know what this jumble word is. Do you know the answer? Perfect! It's time order. Please join me in reading these four words. Classification, explanation, enumeration, and time order. Wow, you did great! Do you know how these words are connected to our lesson in distinguishing text types? They are the four text types that we will be dealing with today. By learning about their purposes and features, it will be easy for you to distinguish text types. Let's begin with classification. Classification is a text type in which a writer arranges people, objects, or ideas with shared characteristics into classes or groups. Its purpose is to organize, sort, and categorize ideas into a group. Its feature allows the author to take an overall idea and split it into parts for the purpose of providing clarity and description. It usually starts with the main idea, using the rest of the paragraph to explain a series of secondary ideas. Take a look at this example. Schools. 
Different students attend different types of schools. However, they can be usually classified as either public, private religious, private non-religious, or alternative. Public schools are funded by the government and the majority of students attend them. Private religious schools are based around a particular faith such as Catholicism, Protestantism, and so forth. The religion is part of the everyday lives of students and they also learn about their faiths. All type of private schools do not receive government funding. Therefore, private non-religious schools are simply just that schools which do not receive government funding and have the ability to make their own rules. Alternative schools can be made up of a variety of different categories, such as Montessori program or technical schools. Most students who attend class in an actual school building go to one of these types of institution. Now, let's study this example. As what I've said earlier, classification textile arranges people, objects, or ideas with shared characteristics into classes or groups. In our example, the paragraph shows different types of schools. Its main idea can be found in the beginning sentence of the paragraph. Different students attend different types of schools. Notice that the succeeding sentences discuss the different types of schools such as public, private religious, non-private religious, or alternative. It also provides details by describing each type of schools. So, when you read a paragraph that sorts its subject to classes, types, or groups, then it is a classification type of text. Is it clear now? Okay, let's go to the next text type. Explanation. An explanatory text or explanation explains the process or how and why things or events work or happen. Its purpose is to explain in details and logically describe the stages in the process. Its features include explaining how things or events happen through a sequence of events and also provides reasons for a process. It is a general statement of the event happening and a concluding statement that sums up the explanation. Let's take a look at how volcanoes are formed. Have you ever wondered how volcanoes are formed? A volcano is a vent or an opening on the Earth's surface which allows molten rock called magma, volcanic ash, and gas to escape out onto its surface. Volcanoes are formed where there is a crack in the Earth. A tube-like passage connects a chamber of magma at the center of the Earth to the Earth's crust. When the pressure builds up in the chamber, the magma, gases, and ash are pushed up through to the top of the tube on the Earth's surface known as a vent. The red-hot magma that escapes the flow over the Earth's surface is called lava, which when cools, forms into rocks. In fact, the mountains we see today are nothing but solidified lava from previously erupted volcanoes. The text explains how a volcano is formed, but let us look at its structure and features. Its general statement is found in the first paragraph. A volcano is a vent or an opening on the Earth's surface which allows molten rock cold magma, volcanic ash, and gas to escape out onto its surface. In the second paragraph, you will find the explanation or sequence of how a volcano is formed. The last paragraph shows the concluding statement. Now, let's proceed to our third text type, enumeration. Enumeration literally means number. To enumerate means to list one by one. This type of text lists the kinds, characteristics, classes, types, parts, and ways of a thing or subject. Its purpose is to list details of a subject. One way of helping you determine this text type 
is looking for transitional words or listing signals and phrases such as in many ways. For instance, namely, to begin with, first, second, in addition, next, then, last, finally, another, also, and most important. But to not confuse enumeration with sequence. Enumeration simply lists down details and the numbering is only for ease of reference and doesn't necessarily imply order of importance. Sequence, on the other hand, places items on the order list. Items higher in the list must occur before items which are lower down. The order is not interchangeable. Now, let's look at this example. There are a number of good reasons why gardening is good for you. First, it is good for your heart. All the digging, planting, and weeding burns calories and strengthens your cardio muscles. Second, gardening reduces stress. It gives you a chance to focus on something that grows and thrives, which can be a great source of joy. Third, it can improve your hand strength. Digging, planting, and pulling weeds do not only grow a garden, but keep your hands and fingers strong. Lastly, growing your own food can help you eat healthier. If you have a vegetable or herb or fruit garden, you're getting fresh produce that you know hasn't been treated with pesticides. As you can see, the text lists down reasons why gardening is good for you with the help of enumerators, first, second, third, and lastly. Now, let's go to our fourth and last text type, the time order text. Time order or chronological order is a text type in which the sentences are arranged according to the sequence of events. The author uses this to inform readers about events or content. This may be organized by time or date, by arranging events as a series of steps, or by following a list-like structure. Chronological sequencing is commonly used in nonfiction texts. This type of text usually uses signal words such as after, afterwards, ago, already, always, at last, at the time, at the same time before, during, eventually, finally, first, first of all, following, further, immediately, initially, in the first place, in the meantime, in that moment, in that instant, last, lastly, later, now, not long after, next, once, presently, second, secondly, Sometimes, soon, soon after, subsequently, suddenly, then, to begin with, today, until, while. And it also uses specific time indicators such as the names of days, months or years, and times of day. Let's study this example. Preserving peaches is easy. First, Check the jars for cracks or chips. Second, place the lids in boiling water to sterilize. While the lids boil, wash the jars and rings in hot soapy water. Next, place the boiling hot peaches and syrup into the hot sterilized jars. As soon as the jar is full within a half inch of headspace, wipe the rim of the jar clean. Immediately cap the jar with a hot lid. Next, place the jar in a steamer. After steaming for 20 minutes, remove the jar from the steam bath. Once the jar has cooled, you can store it until needed. The peaches will stay fresh for several years. The text shows the sequence of how to preserve peaches. Notice that it used transition words like first, second, while, next, as soon as, immediately, next, after, and once. Now, let's try to identify the following text. 
The life cycle of a frog. Frogs are amphibians. They go through its own life cycle to grow. First, the mother frog lays her eggs in the water. This is called frog spawn. Next, the eggs hatch into tiny tadpoles. During this time, they grow gills to help them breathe. Then, they grow two back legs. Later, they grow two front legs. Afterwards, the tadpole looks like a frog, but it has a tail. This is called a froglet. Finally, the froglet loses its tail. Now, it is a frog. The adult frog has no tail as the tail has been reabsorbed by the body. What type of text does this passage show? You're right! This is an explanation text type, for it explains the process of the life cycle of a frog. How about this? Shoppers can be classified according to their shopping techniques as necessity shoppers, overspenders, and impulsive shoppers. Necessity shoppers have an uncomplicated and normal shopping technique. They purchase only the items that are necessary, such as food and toiletries, and they only get these items when they need them. The overspenders purchase too many items and they spend too much money on them. They buy unnecessary products such as clothes and accessories. They can turn a simple trip to the store into a wallet training extravaganza. Finally, there are impulsive shoppers. They are a combination between necessity shoppers and overspenders. They intend to be necessity shoppers by buying items that they need, but they turn into overspenders by buying unnecessary clothes and useless items. Even though there are millions of shoppers worldwide, they can be easily classified by their technique as necessity shoppers, overspenders, or impulsive shoppers. What type of text is this? Correct. This is a classification text. As you can see in the first sentence, shoppers are classified according to their shopping techniques, and they are necessity shoppers, overspenders, and impulsive shoppers. Now let's go to the third passage. Sleeping early is important whether you are a full-grown person or a teenager. The benefits of it are beyond imagination. First, it makes us feel refreshed and energized. Second, it puts our bodies at ease and lowers blood pressure. Third, it reduces the risk of cancer. And lastly, it improves skin condition. Can you identify the type of text this passage shows? Very good! This is an enumeration text. It lists down four benefits of sleeping early. Did you notice the signal words used? First, second, third, and lastly. And now, let's read the last passage. The first thing we had to do was build a frame for the floor of the house. Then, we used a rope to raise all the wood up into the tree. Afterward, we carefully nailed the board to the frame. And soon, we had a floor. What type of text is this? Correct. This is a time order text. It presents the information arranged in a series of steps. It uses signal or transition words such as first, then, afterward, and soon. I think you are ready to answer the test on your own. I'm going to show you five paragraphs and you're going to identify the type of text as to whether they are enumeration, classification, explanation, or time order. I will give you one minute to answer each item. So all in all, you'll have five minutes to answer the test.
Okay, time is up. Let's check your work. What type of text is this? You're right. This is a classification type of text. As you can see, it presents two types of alipin. The alipin sa kikilid and alipin na mamahay. Yes, this is a enumeration for it lists the reasons why listening is important. They are found in the second and third sentences. Now, let's go to the third item. This text is... Very good! This is an explanation text. It explains how a rainbow is formed. Okay, let's go to number four. Again, this is an explanation text. It explains why the ocean is blue. Now, let's find out what text type does the last passage shows. You got it right. This is a time order text. It presents a process that should be done according to its order. Congratulations, kids. You have learned how to distinguish text types according to purpose and features. I'm hoping you can join me in our next episode of English Made Easy with Teacher Jerica so you can learn more. Thank you for watching and goodbye kids!